All right, everybody is calling for lower numbers. People are saying that Bitcoin will go to 10K or 5K. People are throwing in all sorts of bearish predictions, but this is exactly the moment that we have all been waiting for. This is the moment that we can actually expect Bitcoin to bottom out. Look, here's the thing. Back in 2019, everybody was bearish. Everybody was calling for lower numbers, saying how Bitcoin was gonna to go to 1K, but not a lot of people paid attention to the fact that Bitcoin is an extremely good asset that Bitcoin was extremely over uh, undervalued. And because of that, we saw a very quickly recovery back to the upside. And a lot of people here who actually missed here buying at 3K, they said, well, if Bitcoin is gonna go back to these lower levels, well, I'm probably going to buy and then I'm gonna get rich. But turns out that the last moment that we kind of got this level was back in a March crash. And again, everybody was bearish. I remember in a March crash, everybody was thinking Bitcoin was gonna go die. It was, you know, it's gonna go to 3K. But actually what you saw was a very quick recovery back to the upside and then eventually this resulted in the largest bull markets that Bitcoin has ever seen. Now, right now Bitcoin again is on a very low level. Everybody's calling for lower levels saying how Bitcoin has died. But people aren't paying attention to the fact that this, you know, Bitcoin can recover very, very quick to the upside. It has done in the past and Bitcoin is right now extremely and extremely undervalued. I think that the real value of Bitcoin is somewhere around 40,000 US dollars this cycle. What you very often see during cycles is that Bitcoin gets these very strong kind of moves here to the downside. It gets under its kind of general kind of valuation. And then what you see is that the price pops back to the upside very quickly to that level. So in the last bit market, it was about 8,000 US dollars. You can see that generally, you know, Bitcoin kind of traded around this level. Sometimes it's broke above it, sometimes down it. But whenever it was kind of trading around this level, you can see that the price kind of generally went sideways. And yeah, I think that generally if you kind of average out the last cycle, the price here from 20K, then you can probably get like an average price of about 8,000 US dollar. So I think that for this cycle, we're going to see something very similar. So right now we're quite down, but I think that eventually we could recover. Of course, we could still dump bull to 10,000 US dollar. I'm not saying we're going to bottom, but we're probably going to see some kind of vol volatility here in the coming few months still moving forward. But I think eventually somewhere around 40,000 or 200,000 US dollar, that's where we're going to kind of find our next level where we're going to be kind of trading sideways from. And then eventually in 2024, when the next halving happened, that's when we get this new cycle here back to the upside. That's kind of historically what it has been doing here. Uh, but yeah, you can see we are on a very, very low level. And I said this, you know, about a few months ago, once we had this correction to the downside. But look, you can buy Bitcoin right now. And you might, you know, maybe it's possible Bitcoin still gets a correction here all the way to like 10,000 US dollar. But let's look here at what Bitcoin did here back in 2018. What you can actually see is that it went all the way to 3,000 US dollar. But if you actually bought here at 6,000 US dollar, so let's say you bought up here in November of 2018 at 6,000 US dollar, look, you would have still have to hold Bitcoin all the way through this correction. But eventually, if you bought at 6,000 US dollar, just to kind of outline this, you would have only been in a loss here for a few months. But eventually, you would be right down an extremely big profit, and you would be even in profit probably pretty much all the way throughout 2019 and 2020. Besides a small moment here during the March crash. But if you bought it at 6,000 US dollar, you are still up right now about 200%, which easily outperforms inflation, which easily outperforms the S&P 500, gold, everything like that. So if you buy Bitcoin right now, let's say you buy Bitcoin at around 90,000 US dollar, look, it is possible. We're still going to get like 50% correction to 10,000 US dollar. But even if that happens, you're still going to be looking at a very good buy opportunity. And I think in the future, you're still going to be looking at Bitcoin going to much and much higher levels. So what you could do is you could just go DCA, just buy Bitcoin um, in, in very small parts here throughout the coming few years. But generally what DCA means is that you kind of try to get rid of the whole volatility part of Bitcoin, which means that you're probably going to as well have to buy at higher prices. Um, and I think even if you DCA here throughout this whole cycle here back in 2018 and 2020, generally speaking, you would probably have like a higher entry. I think that on average, you would probably get like an entry around like 8,000 US dollar or maybe like 7,000 US dollar. Um, so, you know, 6,000 US dollar, even if you bought last cycle for this massive crash to the downside, would have still be a nice buy entry. Now, I don't think we're going to get that big correction to the downside. I think that there's some potential here that we have bottomed out. And this is just going, you know, looking here at historical kind of indicators. But whenever we get a hash, uh, hash ribbons buy signal, this generally indicates that Bitcoin is going to bottom to the downside. Now, going back here to the start of the video, I said that the price action here looks quite similar to 2019 because you can see something very similar. We had this big correction to the downside. We created here this double bottom pattern. 
And then eventually what you can see is that this little bottom here was very slowly sideways grinding action to the, to the downside before eventually we slowly grind here up. And you can see as well, we got a buy signal here on the right side of the double bottom. This is very, very important because if I look at the Bitcoin price right now, you can see pretty much the same thing. You can see a hash remains buy signal on the right side of a potential double bottom that's, that's forming. And you can see slowly grinding price action to the downside. You can kind of see that this is kind of turning here into a watch. So we could go a little bit lower here maybe, and then all the way squeeze here to the bottom here of this wedge, and then kind of start a slow uptrend here to the upside, which could take like many, many months, maybe all the way here throughout like November of this year, maybe December of this year, before we eventually have that recovery here back to the upside. A chart like this would be surprise, uh, wouldn't surprise me, but would be very, very bullish, because if, a, if Bitcoin plays at this chart, it means Bitcoin doesn't get that 85% correction that we normally see, and then we're only looking at a 75% correction. And so speaking of that, if that would happen, it would kind of imply Bitcoin is kind of decreasing in terms of cycle volatility, uh, which also does have the negative side. You know, if we're going to see less volatility, it means Bitcoin isn't going to get these huge bull runs like it has in the past. But it also would mean that Bitcoin isn't going to get that extreme bear marks like it has, has had in the past. And I think that kind of my thesis is, if you kind of look at the upside of the Bitcoin price, it does tend to decrease here over time. But I also believe that it is possible that the Bitcoin bear markets are also going to decrease over time. So you can actually see that this bear market here in 2015 had about an 86% correction to the downside. Um, and this one had about an 85% correction. And so people kind of basically say that, you know, Bitcoin has to get like an 85% correction. But it's very possible this is going to be the bottom. We're only get like a 75% correction. And that pretty much just means that Bitcoin is decreasing in volatility. And so if you're going to see a similar price action as in 2019, you're going to see slowly sideways action, but still kind of many months of sideways action until like November, December. Maybe we're going to be in a recession at the time. Maybe we're going to see kind of uh, unemployment changing. We're going to see uh, all sorts of problems maybe arising in the banking system. And then maybe we're going to see a Fed reverse their policy. And then until then, we're just going to kind of go sideways here around 20,000 US dollar. Uh, that's kind of my thesis here. I think that's kind of, what I'm looking at right now, but again, uh, you know, nobody can predict the charts. What I'm basically doing here in this video, I'm basically just showing you the facts. I'm basically just showing like, hey, this is what indicators have done in the past. This is what the Fed is saying. This is what I believe is going to happen. But of course, you know, I don't have a magic ball. I can't predict the market. If I could, I would be a multi-billionaire. You know, if, if someone could predict the market, they'd all be like a multi-billionaire. And so, um, yeah, I just look at the indicators. I look at what's happening. What are the fundamentals here of Bitcoin? What has this done in the past? And I think there's a very high probability that we're going to bottom out. Um, but yeah, of course, that's just all my personal opinion. Do your own research. And yeah, if I do look here at the shorter price action, very slowly grinding sideways action. That's my opinion. Very, very bullish. I think this price action looks very similar to 2019. So if we tend to bottom out here, we could still go a little bit lower. But if we if we manage to bottom out here, and people are actively shorting here and we get a slow grind here to the upside, then potentially prepare here for eventually a reversal here back to the upside. If you break lower here, then, well, God knows what happens next. We can still get to the 10,000 US dollar and then we're going to get an 85% correction. But it does seem to be a bit unlikely because we have already seen much liquidations. We've seen big funds blowing up. I think that, you know, the only thing that could blow up at this point in time is miners blowing up you know, potentially mining pools, uh, stopping withdrawals. We have seen something like that happening in China, so I'm a bit careful that I don't I don't want to jinx it. I don't want the, it, to, it to happen. But that's pretty much the only thing that I can think blowing up. And that could be like the only major like sell pressure back here in the market is potentially miners blowing up. But if miners don't blow up in a couple of few months moving forward, I think most of the big funds that could have been liquidated have already been liquidated. Most of the big players which could have been liquidated have been liquidated. And I think at that point, it's pretty much a clean move here back to the upside. But it's probably still going to be a little bit harsh. It's not going to be easy. Generally, these bear markets are not very easy. But if you're just holding, you just have a long-term time frame. I think everything is going to be fine. So this will end the video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, oh, wait. I haven't even gone yet to Twitter yet. I've only been talking about the Bitcoin price. Um, well, I'm just going to go. I'm going to talk about Twitter here in the next video. And there's a quick news update. The White House Office of Science and Tech says crypto mining threatens the U.S. climate, climate efforts. This is quite interesting, uh, but it doesn't really matter too much. I don't think that 
you know, crypto mining is going to threaten the US climate efforts. I don't think it takes that much of the grid to mine some Bitcoin. And anyway, I don't think the US is such a big player on mining anyway. I think most of it happens in like Kazakhstan, where electricity, uh, electricity is like dirt cheap. Uh, probably Russia as well right now because of all the, the gas, um, the cheap gas that's pretty much is left in Russia. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of miners will go to Russia because they can't get rid of all their gas, can't get rid of all their natural resources and probably just end up burning it anyway. And hopefully maybe they make some crypto money from it. Uh, but yeah, this was pretty interesting. But again, you know, this is why I want to invest in a decentralized coin. Um, as, as you guys know, I'm a, I'm so, somewhat of a fan of Ethereum. Like I can kind of understand why it's important for the crypto space to have like an experimental platform that people can build and you know program on. I kind of understand why people want to buy it, but also people to be a bit careful because Vitalik, you know, if Vitalik gets arrested by the SEC, or like if the White House or the US or anyone wants to shut down Ethereum because it gets too powerful, they can probably arrest Vitalik. And what happens next to Ethereum can be anyone's guess. Um, so obviously people be a little bit careful about investing and a lot of these coins would have like a centralized figurehead um, but Bitcoin doesn't have that. So whatever the White House says, it doesn't really make me too worried here about Bitcoin. And generally, I just continue holding. You know, people will, maybe some people will dump the Bitcoin right now. Maybe we see a bit of a move to the downside. But generally, this is kind of noise. I don't think it's that important. Um, so yeah, this was the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.